Hey coders, and welcome to episode 7 of our Pandas playlist. This episode is going to extend the last episode where we started to scrub our data set and handle missing data. However, in this episode, we'll learn that even though our data may be present in the data set, it may be badly formatted or may just not be in the right configuration for us to do some actual analysis on it. So there is a whole suite of methods for transforming this badly formatted data, which we're going to look at today. All right, so I've picked out these four methods, which I use quite frequently in my own work. They are replace, apply, apply map, and finally drop. So I'm excited to demonstrate these methods in the code right now. Awesome, so we are on episode seven, which means now for the eighth time, we will import pandas as PD, and then we'll also load in our data frame using the read CSV method. All right, so this, again, this data frame looks very familiar to us. This is what we've been using throughout the course of this playlist. So now let's take a look at our first method, which is replace. So replace replaces values in a data frame or series with another piece of data. And the cool thing about this method replace is that we can either search for values that we want to replace by exact match, or we can search by regular expression. So let's take a look at both of those. If I run this cell, then we're going to first look at this column right here, test preparation course, and we're going to get the value counts for it. So it looks like we have 642 instances of none and 358 of completed. Let's say for whatever reason that we wanted to change this value none to then to actually show the Boolean false. Well, the easy way to do that would just be to use this method right here, replace, and say, replace, uh, search for this value right here, none, and then replace it with false. Replace all instances of none with false. So if I were to run the cell, then there we go. It looks like now we have false, completed, false, 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 right? So all of these nones got replaced with false. Cool. So this is kind of like a basic example, right? We're just searching for an exact match, right? For none. However, we can actually take this to the next level and search for regular expressions. And the way to do that is to use this regex, this optional argument and set it to true. So first let's look at our telephone column right here. So telephone, as you can see, uh, it looks like the proper formatted weight is 10 characters long. However, there are a couple telephones that are badly formatted. Uh, it looks like there's some spaces maybe, some parentheses, uh, and that's not going to be good when we're trying to analyze telephones. All right, so if I run the cell, then that's going to go and get all of the telephones, uh, all the values that have a length of 10, which is like the appropriate formatted format, and then uh, get uh, the the um, the opposite of that, right? So get not equal to 10. Cool, so negate this filter, and when we do that, it looks like now we're getting all of the badly formatted telephones, right? So again, with the, with the opening and closing parentheses, it looks like this one has a plus one in front of the 10 digits. So how can we search for these badly formatted telephones and fix them? Well, again, we can use regex. So down here, I have written out a regular expression right here. And this might look a little bit confusing if you don't know what regular expressions are, but basically what this is doing is it's searching for uh, plus ones. It has to be a plus and a one, or it could just search for any of these uh, values right here. So maybe like an opening, a closing parenthesis, a hyphen, or a space. And then it's going to replace that just with the empty string. And again, we are specifying that regular expression is equal to true. So if we run this cell again and then search for those same column or those same rows, right? 3, 8, 20, and 30, then now it looks like we have appropriately formatted uh, telephone numbers. Cool. So that is replace. Now this next method is apply, and this one is actually extremely important. So if you're going to learn one method from this video, uh, it should probably be apply. Cool, so the apply or the method apply is often used when you want to pass your series through a custom transformation function, right? So there's a lot of different functions that Pandas has uh, pre-built for you that you can use 
to uh, transform your data. However, that's not going to cover all edge cases, right? That'd be impossible to cover every single edge case that you might want to do, uh, you might want to transform. So the apply is kind of like your catch all function. Cool, so again, you can now define custom functions that you can uh, that you can then apply all of the data in certain series through, right? So every single value now in this math score column, you're going to say pass through this function that I've defined up here, and then uh, store that in a new column called math grade. So let's take a look at that right now. So if I run this cell, and again, this calc letter grade, all that's doing is it's going to uh, get the value of the math score column, which is right here. And then it's just going to assign a letter grade to it, right? So if the value is greater than or equal to 90, it will return an A for for greater than or equal to 80, it'll be a B and so on. Cool, so let's run the cell and there we go. So now we have this additional column, math grade, and it looks like it did the appropriate mappings. Yep, 72 is definitely a C grade. 69 is a D grade, 90 is an A grade. So that looks like it did everything correctly. And that was our own custom function that we applied to this column right here, math score. Awesome, so that is basically the most often, I guess, use case for apply. However, you can also use apply across columns. So if I were to uncomment these two lines and then also uncomment these two lines, uh, what we're gonna do now is instead of taking a single series, we're gonna actually take a data frame and use the apply method on the data frame and specify that we want to uh, apply this function across the columns, across math score, reading score, and writing score. So what this will actually be doing is that it'll be passing in the rows, each one of the rows of these uh, of these three columns. Right, so once we have that row, we're going to select the math score, the reading score, and the writing score, add them all up, and then divide them by three. And that will create somewhat of a composite score. So if we now run this, this composite score, which is kind of like the average, now is displayed in its own column. So that's pretty cool. That's another cool use case of apply. And and that is, uh, looks like everything is coming out correctly. Cool. So you can definitely use the apply method, right? That will work every single time. But some uh, simple transformations can be accomplished using operators, right? So if I were to uncomment this, this is actually a perfectly fine way to create, say, a new column in Pandas. You just say, all right, give me the column that I want to analyze or whatever. So this would be lunch. And then you can just say, all right, maybe like string concatenate uh, space lunch. Or you could say maybe if you were getting the math score column, you could just say, you know, uh, plus one or divided by 100. Uh, so you can oftentimes take an entire series and just use an operator and then append either or do whatever operation you want to on that uh, on that series. So let's take a quick look at that. If we were to run the cell, then there we go. It looks like now we have the lunch column, but now we have appended space lunch to every single one of those columns. So again, this is just a quick and dirty way. Uh, in my opinion too, it's a lot easier on the eyes to know what's happening uh, of just uh, doing a simple transformation on a series. Cool, and then there's one more thing I wanted to cover with this apply method, and that is if there are some pre-existing built-in functions, right, with, with Python, uh, you can totally use those as well. You don't have to always pass in a custom function. Um, for, so for instance, the absolute value is a built-in function for, for Python. So I'm just going to pass that in to the writing score. And if I do that and run this cell again, then there we go, it looks like now the writing score, every single value in that writing score is the absolute value. So there's no negative numbers in this column. Cool, so that is going to be apply, and let's move on to the next method. So the next method is going to be apply map. So this is actually very similar to apply. Um, similar to how apply applies a custom function element-wise for a series, the equivalent for a data frame is apply map. So apply map is going to apply a custom function element wise to a data frame. As you recall, when we did this apply method, it took every single element of a series. 
But if we wanted to apply just a generic function throughout the entire data frame, and we wanted to do it like element by element by element, then we would use apply map. So again, this apply map is for data frames, and apply is generally for series. Cool, so the, the function that I'm going to apply to the entire data frame is called redact. And all that's going to do is it's going to, and let me actually comment that out, all that's going to do is it's going to, uh, it's going to take all of the methods, or it's going to take all the elements in the data frame, and then pass it into this method right here, and then find the length of whatever value of that element is, and then just make a string of asterisks equal basically to that length. So let me actually run it, and I think it'll make a little bit more sense. So now we just have a bunch of asterisks everywhere in this data frame. Cool, so this is again a simple way to define your own custom uh, functions and, and methods. However, most often, or what I see most often, is that people will usually put a lambda function into either apply map or apply. And again, it's, it's just personal preference, really. You can create your own custom function outside of apply and apply map, or you can just specify a lambda function, a one-liner, within the argument itself. It makes no difference. So if I were to now run this, then here we go. Now our math score, reading score, and writing score has been apply mapped, and now we get the value as a decimal. It's, it's the value divided by 100. Cool. Let's look at our last method for this video, which is drop. And this is a simple, very simple method. All it does is it removes columns and rows from your data, uh, data frame or series. Uh, so let's first look at the columns. So again, if we just had uh, some columns, a simple way of removing like one or two, rather than just saying like students data frame and then passing in all of the columns that you wanted in, in this list right here. Uh, if you just had like one or two columns that you just want to remove, you could just use again dot drop and then specify columns equal to whatever columns you want to drop. So if I were to run this, now we have our same students data frame, but the columns telephone and math grade are no longer there. And then we can do a similar thing for dropping rows. So if I were to get, um, let's say all of the rows that are less than 70, um, and then I'll look at that filtered data frame like this. Uh, so cool, so this is the math score less than 70. It's looking correct so far. Um, what I can do is I can either specify, right, like the index numbers by saying index equals and then pass in all the numbers. But what I see most often is that people will usually put like a filtered data frame uh, and then they will get the indexes of all of these rows and then pass that in for the index. So again, we can explicitly state the indices or we can just say, you know, use a filter and then get the indexes of all the rows and then pass that in. So if I run this, then there we go. Now we have dropped all of the rows, all of the indexes, uh, indices that are less than 70 and now all we have are math scores above 70. Cool, so that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you learned a lot and enjoyed it. And I hope you can use these methods in your work to be productive and efficient. Um, but if you learned something and you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next episode.